Hi, I'm the Digital Mermaid and welcome to my backyard. When I first started building the battery, I was under the impression that, well, my BMS can do top balancing, so I don't need to do it beforehand. When I went to assemble the battery and I was rereading the manual, it explained in much more detail why you need to do an initial top balance, even if you bought all of the batteries at the same time and they're supposedly at the same state of charge. Once I read this and I understood the role of it, I felt a bit silly that I didn't clue into it sooner why it was so important. And I spent some time thinking, well, what could I have seen or heard that would have helped me understand the role sooner? And I came up with this contraption here. This is, it's an analogy, it's not perfect. But hopefully it's going to show the role of top balancing and why it's important. The idea with this setup is to simulate a simple 4S 12 volt battery setup. Each one of these spigots provides water into the bucket, which is the same as how the bus bars provide battery power into the batteries. So when I turn on the charger, in this case my garden hose, You see how I get water coming out of all four spigots. The BMS is designed such that as soon as any one of these batteries reach full charge, charging cuts off. It has an ability to balance the individual cells through those tiny little wires that run back, the balance leads that you saw being set up in a previous video. But those are very, very low current and they're connected to relatively small resistors inside the BMS. So to simulate the problem, we're starting off with all of the batteries at exactly the same charge. But let's assume for some reason this battery was charged more than the others. Now what we've done is we've simulated one of the cells being charged a lot more than the others. I'm, I'm sorry, my hose doesn't have colored water coming out of it, but hopefully if I put some ripples, you can see this bucket is currently down to here and this bucket's up to here. We're working under the assumption that if the water overflows the top of the bucket, it's equivalent to a battery being overcharged. And if that happens, the cell is destroyed. So the battery has to stop being charged as soon as any one of these buckets gets close to being full. So to continue this, and we're going to say that the cutoff voltage is going to be about halfway between the top two rings. So now you can see that this battery is full and this battery still has a ways to go. But because this battery is full, the charging has to stop. When you're charging in series, you set the charge voltage to be the maximum per cell voltage, charge voltage, times however many cells you have. So I think it's like 51.2 volts in our 16S battery. That means that, imagine there was 51.2 volts worth of power, water, coming through this bucket this battery is going to keep sucking it up until it gets destroyed. So the only option we have is to cut the charging off entirely and then we have to drain some of the charge out of this battery. The way that the BMS tries to drain one of the batteries enough that it can turn on the charger for the rest of the cells is through that balance lead that goes back to the BMS. On the other end of that in the BMS is a little resistor. I don't know exactly the specs but it's probably a little quarter watt resistor. So relative to how much water is in the bucket, how much water can be drained out, how much power in the battery can be discharged, is relatively small, simulated by a little hole drilled behind this tape. So if this was the BMS, it would have cut off the charging and then it would have started draining some of the water out. Now, that little hole, relative to how much water is in this battery, 
it's going to take a long time to drain this down to a point where it's safe to turn on the charging again. So this is going to take a while. Meanwhile, it might be peak solar production and the power has nowhere to go. The BMS doesn't allow any power to come in. It can't because to allow power to come into these batteries, it's going to have to let power come into this battery as well because we're running at 51 volts. It would take no time at all for this bucket to overflow for the battery to become too high voltage and destroy it. So we have no choice but to sit here and wait. This is where I would play the Jeopardy theme if it wasn't copyright. So for the sake of the demonstration, we're going to pretend that this is drained enough that it's now safe to restart charging. So now this battery is drained enough to start charging again. And now we have to stop again. And we can see after doing two cycles, there's still a fair difference between these two buckets. Now, in this demonstration, the amount of water we're dealing with in the bucket relative to the amount of water that can come into the bucket relative to the amount of um, power that can be drained from the hole, it's relatively similar. So if this was actually the ratio of our battery, all right, you know, maybe it would take a couple of days, but it would eventually get there. That's not the case with the batteries we're dealing with. And this is also with all of the batteries being relatively close to begin with. If one battery for some reason had been dramatically discharged or overcharged relative to all of the others, this process could take days, weeks, months to finally balance the batteries. And in all of this time, you're not able to get full charge out of your cells. Their state of charges are differing, so their wear is different, and so on and so forth. So the role of top balancing, the reason why it works is when we're charging normally, we're charging at whatever voltage of the battery is, which is the cutoff voltage of all of the cells times however many cells in the battery. So in this 4S example, with a cutoff voltage of 3.6 volts, that means it's going to be 13 point something volts. So if we leave the charging on, this battery will go well past 2.6, 2.7 volts. It'll go all the way up to 13 volts if it doesn't blow up first. Well, Lithium iron phosphate doesn't blow up. That's one of the good things about it. Point is, the cell would be damaged. By top balancing at 3.6 volts, it means that as soon as one battery reaches its full charge, it simply stops accepting power. If we were measuring the amperage going into it, it would drop to zero. So with top balancing, what we're doing is we're running the charger and we're simply capping off each battery as it gets full. So we pretend this cell is full now. We cap it off. We're going to say this cell is full. Cap it off. And just like that, our battery is top balanced. I'm the Digital Mermaid. Thanks for watching.